is February 1st. Oops. Okay, let me start again. Good morning. It's February 1st, and this is the initial meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee, known by the acronyms of TSL. Uh, I am not a member of this committee, but as president of the council, it's my responsibility to call the meeting to order and conduct the election for a chair of the committee. And then I turn the meeting over to uh, the chair who then proceeds to have an election for the vice chair and can, proceeds with the rest of the meeting. So with that, let me just start by saying um, the open meeting law allows us to continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the council physically present at a meeting location. Uh, at the same time, we provide access through Zoom and the phone. Um, given that we have a quorum of the Town Services and Outreach Committee present, I'm calling the meeting to order at 10.01. And with that, I would like to ask if there are either nominations or self-nominations for the position of chair. Bob Hegner. Yes, I will. Count. Councillor Hegner? No, no, just Bob. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay, Bob Hegner. Yes, I would like to nominate Andy Steinberg. Andy, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Are there any other nominations? Andy, would you like to say a few words? Well, I'm very uh, appreciative, Bob, of you uh, nominating me. Uh, the reason that I had expressed uh, an interest in uh, being at least for this year the chair of the committee is that uh, I'm the one member who was on last year who's repeating again so that uh, the work that we had done last year, which is expressed in the carryover memo, uh, I since I was the one who was involved with it. it I felt that I could contribute um, some guidance in the process. So that I think that was it. I think it's a great committee and any any member here is capable of being chair, but that was why I put my uh, put my interest forward to Bob. Okay. Um and See no other nominations. I'm going to ask someone to put the following motion in place, and that is to uh, elect um, Andy Steinberg, Councillor Andy Steinberg, to the position of Chair of Town Services and Outreach. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank Alpha. you. And we're going to move to a vote. I'll try to do this in alphabetical order. Holla, Lord. Lord, I. Uh, Bob Hegner. I. I'm sorry, it was Councillor Lord. Um, Bob Hegner. Um, Councillor Ryan. I. Andy Steinberg. I. Jennifer Taub. I. It's unanimous. And with that, Andy, I'm going to ask that Athena put me in the audience and you take over the meeting. Yeah, well, thank you, Lynn. Thank you, everyone on the committee, and I appreciate it, and I will try to uh, not let you down. Uh, and uh, proceeding to the agenda, as we go through the agenda, election of vice chairs next, and uh, so I'll put it up for uh, nominations. Uh, Jennifer. Um, I'd like to nominate Councillor Ryan for vice chair. Councillor Ryan, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Are there any other nominations? Seeing no one else asking for uh, recognition for to make a nomination, uh, I think that what would be in order is uh, a motion uh, to, Point of order, um, you, you should probably give Councillor okay. Ryan an opportunity to make yes, a comment and, you're, and you're, anyone else. An I, thank you. Thank you, Athena. I don't have the, the guidebook in front of me for elections, so thank you. Uh, Councillor Ryan, would you like to? Uh... Yeah, just, just briefly, Andy, thank you. Uh, Jennifer, thank you for the nomination. And 
you know, I, I actually was involved in helping create this committee um, in the early years of the council. I served on it. Um, briefly, I was chair of it. Um, so I know it well. I'm very fond of it. I actually believe, I personally think it's my favorite committee. I know that sounds a little weird to some people, but uh, town services and outreach are two things that I think are really important. I, I think I work well with Andy, and uh, I would certainly give him all the support and help I can. Uh, so, yes, I would uh, be delighted to serve as vice chair if that's the will of the committee. I guess other members can say something, and uh, I will ex exercise that privilege because I I worked with George uh, on this committee previously because both of us served in the third year of the first term of the council on this committee, and uh, uh, George did some magnificent work in uh, a number of issues, but one in particular that I would reference is that uh, we needed to come up with a uniform policy to uh, address the issue of parking regulations because we had been uh, tasked with uh, looking at uh, Lincoln Avenue and adjoining streets and uh, we had no basis for uh, making the kinds of judgments that needed to be made and develop uh, George helped by uh, leading in developing a policy that not only um, Ben was able to be applied for Lincoln and reached a resolution on Lincoln, but um, also is used at least in one other street, which is Kendrick, and is a standing policy. And I think that that was a magnificent uh, example of the kind of leadership that uh, we have brought to the committee and uh, glad to be serving with them again. So um, anybody else would like to make a statement? And if not, then I guess we're uh, uh, ready for a motion. And the thing of the motion would be uh, to, uh, to elect Ryan as committee vice chair for 2024. Okay, I will put that motion forward. I'll second. <clears throat> so the motion has been made and seconded. And uh, I'll just go alphabetically again, because I think it'll be easier. Um, Council Lord. Lord, aye. Uh, Bob Hegner. Aye. Council Ryan. Aye. And I'm an aye, and uh, Jennifer. Aye. So it is unanimous and uh, we have a chair and a vice chair, and we can move on to um, the meeting schedule that was proposed. Uh, and it was in the packet. So everybody had a chance to see it. It was developed, I think, by Athena. Did you develop that? Yes, I um, tried to take into consideration all of the other committees that uh, members serve on and the the other committee meeting schedule, trying not to schedule both TSO and um, CRC, I'm sorry, TSO and GOL on the same Thursday so that people don't have a, people who serve on both committees don't have a four hour commitment on in one week on one day. Um, and then I also um, put in case some of the spacing between weeks doesn't make sense Right off the bat, I put TSO on second and fourth Thursdays. Um, if I may, Andy, CRC opted to put an, a meeting, a second meeting in July, in the early part of July, when I had proposed just one meeting in the latter part of July um, that to kind of mimic the council meeting schedule, um, but it's up to the committee if they'd like to keep a placeholder meeting for that July probably would be July 11th um, and then cancel it if if they don't need it. And then because of the timing of Thanksgiving and the, the other winter holidays, 
um, TSL has only one meeting in November and December, CRC opted to um, double their, to piggyback their meetings with finance committee on the Tuesdays in November and December so that they can keep meetings, um, keep two meetings on the schedule in those months. So TSO um, could choose to meet on the same days as GOL in November and in, in December if that is preferred. So do any members of the committee, uh, let's start with July, want to propose that we put a placeholder on uh, July 11, I think was the date that you mentioned. George? Uh, Councilor Ryan? Yeah, um, I think it's a good suggestion. I, I think this is a fine. I, first of all, I appreciate very much what Athena's done. She's had to juggle 14 balls at once. I appreciate uh, putting this meeting on alternate uh, uh, Thursdays uh, so that some of us don't have an entire day devoted to uh, uh, committee meetings. Uh, so I'm very grateful for the work she's done. Um, I don't have a strong feeling on this, but uh, perhaps a placeholder uh, for the uh, July 11th uh, meeting might make some sense. Uh, we also certainly can just call a meeting um, if we see the need, and that may very well happen in the course of our work. Um, that's my thought on it. <clears throat> Would you, uh, Councilor Ryan, suggest that uh, as we list July 11, that we put something in there about uh, if needed or tentative? I'd have no objection to that. Okay. Um, Jennifer? Yeah, I don't want to belabor this. Um, I think maybe it was the first year I was on the council. We had this for an August council meeting. And I think people tend to make plans assuming we're not having a meeting, you know, when they see that on the calendar. And I think when we did have to add it, there were people scrambling. Um, so I'm also concerned, you know, I think some of the thinking for not, I mean, I realize we, if we need a meeting, we pro probably have to have it, but um, the, the thinking behind not having meetings in July was so staff could plan vacations. So I'm concerned if we, a week or two before, decide we need a meeting, you know, I guess I'm asking Athena what impact that has on the staff side. Um, Andy, if I can speak on this. Yeah, uh, Athena? Um, it's been my experience that come July, folks appreciate a break, not just staff, but counselors come back from the break in July feeling from what they've told me, from what some counselors have told me, that the time off has been really beneficial. Um, I think that people take the if needed meetings both ways. Some people plan around those as though they will happen and some plan around those as though they won't happen. So from that experience, I would say either put it on there or don't. <laughs> So that so that it's clear that it's there, you can cancel it if you don't need it, or don't put it on and don't plan to have a meeting. And if it if it comes time, then and you feel that you need to schedule um, another meeting in July, then we can work with everyone's uh, vacation schedules and make sure that it's on a date that works for everyone. So should we take the if needed off? Anyone object to doing that? Jennifer? Yeah, I agree taking it off. I'm one of the people that assumed it wasn't happening and was scrambling. <laughs> Bob? Yeah, I think we can take it off. I mean, we can always add it if we need it. Okay. Um, um, Andy, Andy um, Bob, do you mean take the meeting off or? Be if needed, I believe you said. No, I meant to take the meeting off the calendar, right? I mean, Jennifer, you, you've you made some plans, so you can't make that date. Is that correct? No, no, I haven't made any plans. I'm just saying in the past, oh. we had a council meeting that said if needed, and I think more people assumed it wasn't happening. And I see. Yeah. Yeah, I, then we can leave it on. And, you know, if we don't need it, we can cancel it. If it's there, it'll be, you know, people will be aware of it. And I guess the next thing to just draw this to a close is that um, November and December, 
it's really uh, uh, do we really want to go for uh two months with only two meetings we did should we add at least one in which what date would it be because uh, is the twenty um uh, the twenty eighth Thanksgiving? Yes, it is. So I thought. So if you chose a Thursday in November, it would be the same day as GOL. Those dates are November seven or November twenty one, and they would be back to back um, dates for the meeting on the fourteenth. So it would either be the seventh and the fourteenth, or the fourteenth and the twenty first. You chose to add one there. So uh, I think there are two questions. One is, do we add one meeting or two? And uh, is there a suggestion of a date? Jennifer? Well, I think we definitely don't want anyone to have back-to-back -back meetings on the 21st, four days before Christmas. So, Oh, I'm I sorry. Th those were November dates. Oh, not December 21st. Okay. Oh. For November, it would be the 7th or the 21st. In December, okay. it would be the 5th or the 19th, if you wanted to add one. And all four of those dates are GOL meeting dates. And that impacts George? So I say we leave it up to George. <laughs> I, I think for one, I mean, it, it really, uh, it, it just seems like a big gap. Um, and I And I see that. And I think I could uh, survive uh, one, uh, perhaps two sessions where they, because it would be a, a 10 a.m. meeting and then a uh, probably a 6.30 or 7.30 meeting. So there'd be four hours of council of committee meetings on that particular day. But that would not be the end of the world for me. I could certainly manage that if we think that we really should be meeting a little bit more often at that time of the year. Um, so I, I, I guess my answer is if the committee wants to meet more often, which does seem like a not unreasonable thought, given that uh, our meeting schedule currently, I could live with one or perhaps even two uh, back to backs. Do you have any uh, suggestion about date? I'm looking at my calendar. Um, we are currently scheduled. We're talking about uh, November. We're meeting 14th. Um, I think, yeah, the seventh is, is perhaps, is that, you know, I don't know. I really don't. Um, but, uh, Thanksgiving is the 28th. Is that right? Correct. Yes. That's also my birthday. So for what it's worth, that happens every, like every 10 years or something. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah. Anybody have any thoughts? Uh, I think you all should decide what you think is the right frequency. Um, and don't worry about me. On this uh, Andy, if I can make it a suggestion, perhaps because the holidays are later in the month on both in both November and December, the earlier dates would be a better idea so that people don't have to worry as much about conflicting with holiday plans. So November 7 and December. Yeah. 7. I yeah. agree. I agree. That makes sense. The other one I had thought about but is the December 5. Okay. And these are meetings we can also, we can cancel them if we need to, but it's, I think uh, Jennifer's right. Having it on the schedule um, is, is focuses our minds and if needed is probably not a, a, uh, a good idea. So why don't we put them in and uh, we'll see how things play out. Yeah, but I think all of us will remember that uh, we've thought about the pressure of the holidays and possibility of uh, desire to cancel. I wonder if, it, Andy, if I may, um, bring our attention back to the summer, August. We have two dates in August, uh, the 15th and the 29th. Um, that is the month traditionally that I uh, my I go away for uh, a week. Um, I know already that I will not be here on August 15. Um, I could do it remotely. Um, I really don't like doing that, but I certainly can, especially if it's important. Um, I'm wondering if uh, what the rest of you think about that particular month having two meetings in August. Uh, I think that is often thought of as we have two in July, two in June, 
Um, I, I would like to suggest that we take one out. It doesn't have to be the 15th, um, but what do people think about that? Do they, they're okay with two meetings in August? It's pretty much a dead time and people are vacationing, at least some of us are. Any thoughts on that? Bob has a hand up. Yeah, um, this, I'm I'm open to anything. I mean, if anything, we tend to take our vacations in September because we like to go to places like Europe where, where it's just too hot in August and too crowded. <laughs> so, um, so I will, you know, I'll have to work around the September schedule. It's perfectly acceptable to be absent from some meetings too. <laughs> um, and just a note about the August meeting dates, the council, the finance committee, GOL and CRC all have two meeting dates in August. Um, so folks will have to decide whether they wanna do what, those meetings. What's wrong with those people? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine and it means two, it means two meetings each month which is fine so, uh, we, we so shall we leave it as is um and paul did you have a comment or? yeah i do also want to mention that you know in terms of staff attendance staff do take vacations and so you you may have a meeting but there you may not have staff you know in attendance that you might need but so we can but we can schedule things as we talk about the schedule so we know where staff are at, at certain times so it's staff i encourage staff to take vacations during the summer um which is usually the best time for the staff that's when they want to take them so as you th we can but we can manage your agendas to uh, manage where when staff are available Okay, uh, that's helpful to know. And obviously, when we get to scheduling specific items, if there is an item that relies on a staff member and that staff member is planning a vacation, we will not be able to schedule for that date that particular item. So it's uh, duly noted, but uh, let's move this along then. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the uh, schedule as now presented? I so move. Second. So there's been a motion that's made and seconded. Um, I don't think further discussion is needed, particularly if anybody wants to say anything more, please raise your hands. Otherwise, uh, it's, uh, Go through uh, Paula. Lord I. Um, sorry, Councillor Lord, I apologize. Um, and uh, Bob Hegner. Aye. Uh, Councillor Ryan. Aye. I'm an aye. And uh, Jennifer. Aye. So we've been unanimously adapted the schedule. Which then gets to the review of the carryover items, and I uh, appreciate you uh, being here for the um, Paul. Paul has been the um, staff person who works um, closely with this committee since we review his appointments and uh, we're dealing with town services as a principal um, issue, so that uh, it's been very helpful. Uh, one comment about the carryover memo, since I was involved in writing it, and uh, at least one member of the committee commented to me about how long it is, um, and <laughs> that that is true, and I think that it's obvious what happened was that uh, two members of the committee uh, volunteered to write more extensive sections regarding um, the issues that they were working on. One was uh, the streetlight policy and Anna was uh, vice chair of the committee last year. And uh, we spent a lot of time on that issue. So she volunteered to write it up knowing that uh, uh, we needed to be able to pick up on it in, uh, as we proceed and the other, um, was uh, Shalini Baldwin, who 
uh, is a co-sponsor with Jennifer and me and Alicia from Council of the uh, Waste Hauler. And uh, as you will note, as you look at that section, uh, it was written by Shalini and she has spent a lot of time in her last months on the council because she's very, was very committed to the issue and wanted to make sure that um, it was continued for consideration and discussion in this council. So that's why it's as long as it is, the actual memo is, um, that introduces all of this is a lot briefer. Uh, so uh, I guess the first, uh, see if they're general questions, but otherwise what I would like to do is just go through the automatically carried over section first that is beginning on page one of the memo um, and see if there are any questions. And uh, so that um, you have an opportunity to um, get up to speed on these issues and uh, we can get reports from Paul where they're appropriate and uh, go through the items that are listed because everything that's in that first section of uh, what will be automatically carried over, including the two that have uh, the more extensive reports appended at the end of there. So, and then um, what I wanna do uh, is a uh, follow-up item then um, is uh, we have the, Items not uh, our upcoming agenda items is the way it's listed on the agenda, which would be an opportunity if there are other things that people would like to get our thinking about um, to to um, allow people to address things that they think the committee ought to be considering in the next year. Does that seem like a good way to approach it? And if there's agreement, then uh, let's start to see if there are any questions about the North um, Pleasant Street pedestrian improvements, which is item number one. That one was pretty straightforward. And I think George may have been an issue that even dates back to your first term. Yeah, right. I think the question I have is just what what are next steps? Um, are we waiting to hear something from uh, staff? Are we ready to hold a public forum? I see in the uh, the memo that TSO recommends that we hold a public forum. I think that makes sense. Um, are we ready to do that? Are we just is this on hold? What's the the current status? Uh, let me put my hand up. Paul. Well. Yeah, so um, the DPW has done the engineering work and proposal for this. There isn't, there aren't funds to do any of the work, so it was not, um, you know, a priority at the time. And I think we can put this on the list of things to, you know, I can talk with the, you know, superintendent of public works and look at our finances on when we can start to do these things. I think the goal would be to get approval from the council to do some or all of this work um so that when the money be does become available it, you've already approved it so i think that would, i would suggest that you make this you know you i can work with the chair to, to place this on the agenda at some point during the coming year so the next step paul sounds like it, it's a council action and uh, we would wait for that so this goes on the back burner for tso council needs to act and that will happen maybe in the next six months and then we'll go from there yes okay Thank you. Yeah, sure. yeah, I just wanted to ask, is this something that um, the staff is actually um, actively looking for funding for, or we expect that funding opportunities come at certain times? It would it would have to come out of our road paving money, um, unless there's some other source of funds that we can identify. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the road paving issue is one that didn't get listed on the carryover memo, but is one that has 
was a lot of attention paid in uh, the prior term. Uh, and uh, we had an excellent presentation that was made and uh, should see if we could find that presentation to offer to people or need to repeat it uh, to at least get a, uh, make sure that everybody's in the same plane about how DPW evaluates roads yeah. and uh, makes recommendations and decisions and yeah, what that's, the process is. That's good. We can send that out, Andy. I think you're right. Uh, Jason Skeels had done that and we recorded it and packaged it up. So it is really an informative presentation. It's about 30 minutes or so, but it, you learn so much about roads by watching it. So I encourage you to watch it. So uh, Paul can send that out to the committee. Uh, appreciate that. George, uh, Councilor Ryan. <clears throat> I, yeah, that's fine, Andy. Um, I think it's great. I would like to see if we could, when we get this, just if we could put it on the TSO website. Um, There's something we'll come back to maybe later, or maybe I'll keep making this point as we go along through the carryover memo. I personally would like to see the website, the TSO website, a super resource so that uh, we could send constituents. They they talk to us about this a lot. Um, obviously, they go to the D. I assume we could also put it on the DPW website, but I'd like it because uh, we are called town services and outreach. Um, I think this is a thought that I have is that uh, when we do get this link, that we also we look at it. A that's important, and we we study it, but also that we make it available to constituents using our website. I, I, we can send you the, the link to where it is, George, on the website and share it out. I, I think, um, you know, our web folks try to organize our website so that's in a way that's more, that's coherent. So you don't have to go to a committee's page to find the material. If, if we're really talking about roads, you know, people won't think to go to the TSO to look for it, an item. So we try to put it in a place where, like, if, if it's about roads, people would find it, but we can place it. Uh, add it to the committee's packet for sure. It will be added to the committee's packet. Jennifer? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I remember a couple of times sending it out in my new, the link to the video in um, my district newsletter. Uh, so this gets a little off topic, but it seems somewhat related. Is is TSO where we could also, I know we had had a discussion about the C-click fix, because that I was also always sending out to constituents. Um, we had discussed in the last council that maybe that could become a little more interactive. So when people, um, you know, filed um, in C-Click Fix that there was a road or sidewalk that they thought needed repair, that they might get some feedback that had been received or where it was in the queue or, mm -hmm. or maybe that's something we want to add to another TSO Agenda. I, can, I can. I mean, you do get acknowledgement for every C click fix item that gets submitted. It automatically sends you a, a re, and if it gets resolved, you get an email saying it's been resolved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I use C click fix all the time, and it, there, it's it's it, it, it's it gives you updates along the way. Okay, because I filed something in December of 2022, and I haven't. <laughs> you didn't get a response. You know, actually, you did it for me in your office, so you probably got the response. Oh, yeah. But, um, okay. Now, I, I remember a couple of letters coming in from constituents to the full council. I think somebody had filed something, and it turned out to be a road that was it was a state road, and they hadn't heard back. But um, so they inquired about it later, and then I think you responded that it actually wasn't a town road. Mm -hmm. But I... Um, but maybe that's something we could put on a future agenda because again, something was filed in front of my house um, in 2022, and I don't know what's happening. You know, I, I hear that from constituents that they put something in and then they, so, you know, right, they yeah, may so hear back if it's fixed two or three years later. But that seems like a long period where they're not hearing back. Tina. I'm going to suggest that Jennifer, you take this up with Paul offline because it's not really within the purview of the committee and it's not on the agenda today. Okay, I will. Sorry. There are a whole lot of road issues that we probably need to talk about and try and um, find our role in 
And I guess this is as good a time as any just to mention very briefly, um, because again, it's not on the agenda, but um, our relationship with the Transportation Advisory Committee in trying to find what our role is and what their role is and how it relates, I think is a uh, major issue that needs to be addressed um, fairly promptly because uh, I think the Transportation Advisory Committee, um, having been the liaison to that committee, um, is something that needs uh, needs attention. It needs because they need to know what their role is and um, how they fit in with us. And we've never satisfactorily addressed that issue is uh, the conclusion that at least they have. They have. So shall we move on to the uh, participatory budgeting Commission recommendations, which have just continued to be on hold and really did not spend much time in the last council on that issue that I can recall. Uh, but it is in the charter and was referred. Paul, did you have something? Or? Yeah, so the, the, the council has met the requirements of the charter. The charter just said you had to look into it. The charter did not say you had to take action on anything. So you've met the requirements of the charter. Whether you want to continue this or not is up to the council. Jennifer? Yeah, so I was not aware that um, this had been referred because I haven't been on TSO before, but I think it's a great, maybe long overdue um, suggestion to have uh, the a town gown committee as part of the participatory budgeting process. So how, if we wanted that, if we wanted to move forward to make that happen, would it have to go back to the full council or has it already been referred to TSO? The, there has been report given to the town council. So if you wanna, you should review that and decide if you wanna move forward and when you wanna move forward on whatever recommendations they have. So how do we make that, do we want to make that part of how, and do we want to, and how do we make that part of this committee's, what we're going to work on or look at? I think we would have to schedule it as an agenda item. Uh, Athena? There was a council referral in 2021, Paul, to TSO um, to refer to Town Services and Outreach Committee to explore the development of a town gown working partnership on participatory budgeting um, as outlined in the report. So it is within, it, it has been carried over in TSO over and over again. It's, it's in their, within their duties, um, but they just haven't taken it up in years. So you may have forgotten that it's already come to them. Thank you. Councilor Ryan. So it sounds like this item, um, we have a report we need to read, and at some point it could be put on the agenda if uh, the chair wishes or if there are enough members of the committee who want to put it on the agenda for discussion. Um, so I think this is a future item. Um, at the moment, some of us have some homework to do, and at some point, uh, perhaps someone can ask this to be put on the agenda. I would not be one of those people, but uh, there may be three who would like to have it on the agenda at some point. But right now, I think it's it's a it's a back burner issue, and uh, we have some report to read. Jennifer, is that issue? So we'll be sent the report with that. Uh, so the, there was a report from twenty twenty one. Is that what I'm understanding? The the participatory budgeting group um, created a report back in twenty twenty one. Oh, so it's just their that. full report, and that's yeah. part of that. I okay. can find that and share that with the committee. And when it goes on the agenda, I'll put it in your meeting packet. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, the next item is the uh, refuse and recyclable materials uh, piece, which has a much longer 
section uh, is noted previously that follows, and uh, some of us, I think that uh, three members of this committee went to an MMA session on this issue, and Paul was at that session too. So the four people present who are at the MMA uh, presentation that dovetailed exactly. Paul, you want to? Could we invite Guilford into the meeting for the next this item and the next item? Because he can have updates, direct updates for you. Is he available? He's here. Okay. I can invite him in. Yes, please bring him. Good morning, Guilford. Good morning. How are you today? Well, then, well. Uh, so we have two items that in the first one we're talking about is uh, getting an update as to where we are with the uh, trash hauling by law, the waste uh, refuse collection, recyclable materials by law. And uh, I think that we're the last um tso was at was that uh we were waiting for um a report from the rfis that had been received so we've received the rfis um susan wait and i are going through them and we're trying to come up with a cost range of a cost range for the items that we asked for in the rfi and then come up with sort of a Come up with a background on our uh, cost estimate for running a program if we wish to do certain things. And uh, do you have a timeline as to when we might be able to receive that? We're hoping to be done this month with it. Um, we have the information. I have a vacation. And I think Susan has a vacation this month and then we hope to have it out by the end of the month. Okay. Um, questions from the committee and uh, Guilford on this or of either of the co sponsors? Jennifer. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say that I appreciate um, getting it by the end of the month because I feel like we're we're kind of stuck. We can't really move forward until we have that information. So that would be, um, you know, very helpful to know that we'll have it by a specific point. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm, I, I'm curious about uh, yard waste. Uh, I noticed it was mentioned in the, the longer summary, but I didn't see any action re related to yard waste. Um, is that include, was that included in the RFIs? It, our yard waste was included and so was bulky waste. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Ryan. So when this does come back to us, the RFI, uh, what would be the next steps? Um, what uh, is, uh, what would be the committee's next task? I think the, de the decision by the committee is to decide what you want to do. If you want to continue moving forward, what additional information you feel you're going to need, if you want to move forward or not. Um, I think uh, you want to look at the, it's a it's a big project. I mean, it's not going to happen anytime soon. It's a, it's a major commitment of town's resources to even develop the project. So we just have to decide. You know, I think that what we had said is we don't have enough information. The RFI is giving us information directly from haulers. We've had the support of the DEP person, Susan Waite, um, and then it's going to land into your laps. It's like, what would you like to do next? Jennifer? Yeah, is it, um, do you feel that the responses to the RFI will give us a lot of information to answer some of the questions, you know, Paul just articulated? The answers to the RFI will tell us, give us some, a range of prices to do what we want to do. And then you'll be able to decide if you truly want to eat the elephant or not. 
Um, will the RFIs um, be available to the public or did they contain information that uh, can't be made public and only the summary can be made public? Uh, I need to go back through. Some people did have some some people did have some proprietary information they did not want released. So I'd have to go through and redact some of that if we wanted to release the whole RFIs. And uh, I think there are two things that it might be helpful to send out to the committee for inclusion in the packet for this meeting or next meeting. One is uh, the M MMA slides from the presentation that was made so that those of us uh, who were not at the conference could at least see what the presentation was. It was uh, largely by DEP regarding um, the state solid waste master plan that we need to be conscious of. Um, and uh, the second was that there were two towns that presented after DEP about their person, their experiences within their towns. And uh, so if that material can be made available. And the other thing would be helpful is the um, RFI itself, uh, the request for information, not the responses, but what was sent out to haulers so that uh, they, there would be some context available. And if there's no objection, I just ask that it be added to the uh, packet for today's meeting and uh, then you can review it as you receive it and have time. There are other questions regarding uh, the RFI. The other thing, Guilford, we talked about earlier in the meeting before you, um, I don't know if you were listening, was there was some discussion of the North Pleasant Street. Um, and uh, we, we did have uh, some discussion about that, about it, needing to move forward um, in an appropriate time to sort of address the question of what should be done with that particular uh, project um, if funds become available and recognizing that the funds have not been committed to it. And uh, so that was um, a discussion that took place before you were here. I don't know if anybody has questions that they wanted to ask Guilford about uh, North Pleasant, and if not, we should go on to the um, safety zone issue, which I think is uh, much more active at the present time. So the fourth item then is the uh, question of the um, safety zone uh, and uh, reference to specific MGL statute that was accepted by the council. And uh, there was an engineering study that is a required part of the process for um, adopting for that particular street area, um, any particular, any street area that you propose to actually adopt a speed limit that was uh, consistent with the safety zone uh, that we're permitted to do. And uh, the engineering study, I believe, is underway. And uh, there was going to be a report back from the town manager by February 1st, which happens to be today. Uh, so, Paul, do you have anything to report? Deferred at Guilford. <laughs> I got a draft report earlier this week, and then there's a couple of things I had them actually change in the report so it makes it easier to read. They had some, there's more clarifying information and tables and stuff, and I had them put it up higher up, and they're working on that, and I probably will get it sometime next week, and then it'll be available.
Other uh, Jennifer. Yeah, just for my own clarification. I can't hear you, Jennifer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was on mute. I'm sorry. Um, is this particularly about Henry Street or? Yeah, okay, not townwide. Thank you. Yes, it's just Henry Street. And the, the uh, we took some action with the in the council approved uh, of installing uh, or moving forward to install speed automated speed signs on either side so that people would know the speed that they're driving. That correct, my correct. Yes, and when we were talking to a vendor about getting a sign. Um, we kind of, the signs we normally use, we're trying to decide whether they go with a normal sign or go with a second sign. Um, and we've been talking to the vendor about that. And that's where that is. In all other action that was re requested by the, uh, daycare and parents who have kids at the daycare who raised the issue on hold until we get the engineering study. Yes. The engineering study would then enable us to consider whether to adopt the safety zone, the speed limits, and other things that we're permitted, would be then permitted to do. So that's where that is. Other questions about Henry Street or uh, the issue itself. And the last item um, was uh, the topic of uh, 17, uh, chapter 90, 17C and 18B, which allow uh, speed limit uh, decisions to be made under certain circumstances that are provided by statutes. And as noted, the prior discussion had to do with um, 18B, which is uh, one that was accepted by the uh, council on prior recommendation and is the activity that's involved. Uh, but uh, 17C is a uh, different section. Um, does anyone uh, have questions or want to make an ex? Can someone make an explanation of 17C? Uh, briefly, 17C is if adopted by the town, it would allow um, the town to establish a speed limit of 25 miles per hour in those densely populated areas, those densely settled areas, I believe, from my recollection. Yeah, I think that's, and the question had come up um, a long time ago back, it may have even been in the first council because of a, a pedestrian death that happened on North Pleasant Street and uh, a request that was made to the council to adopt this provision and to lower the speed limit on that particular street. And uh, that's where this uh, first arose. George? Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, as far as this committee is concerned, this sounds like something that we could move ahead on, but it would require presentations, I assume, by relevant uh, people who actually know what they're talking about and in terms of its impact and in terms of what this may or may not do. Um, I have some personal sympathy to this desire to address speed limits, but it may turn out not to make practicals. I just don't know. There's obviously a great deal I simply don't know, but um, I would think this is something that we could uh, move forward on if uh, others felt that it should be done. Uh, it's basically up to us. It's in our court. We're not waiting on any reports. We're not waiting on any action by staff. Um, it would be a matter of us, uh, I guess, asking for a presentation or trying to decide what information we need um, to to address this. Uh, and so I guess I'm asking my colleagues whether they uh, think this is something we should try to move uh, forward more quickly 
Um, we've got a couple items that seem more back burner because we're waiting on stuff. We can't really do much. Um, I don't know. What do people think? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, what I'd like to know is um, how much of the town would be impacted by this speed limit and, and where would it be? I mean, I when, when I was canvassing, I had one homeowner um, on Shea Street uh, request that the speed limit be lowered there all the way to Route 116 because the 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 district for the or the the light the flashing lights for Cracker Farm didn't go far enough and people were speeding. So uh, there must be other places like that in town where we should focus on that. So I I don't I don't know if we have that information or if that we should you know request that information from the public or what. Yeah, I respond to the second bit, Athena. I think all those questions would come up during the committee's review and recommendation process that wasn't really explored in depth yet. And so all of those questions and answers, I think, would be part of the process. I think at this point, we just need to figure out, you know, what items TSO wants to come when and so that we have enough time to prepare some of those answers for you before they, they come up on your agenda. I think for some of these questions, we'll need um, input from staff and potentially um, KP law to let us know what we need to do and how. So it, I think for right now, it's more of a timing question than anything. Councilor Ryan. And I think if I understand Bob's comment, um, at some point we'd also want the public. Uh, so we'd have a kind of public forum. We'd be inviting um, public input. I'm not saying soon, but at some point. Paul? Well, I, mean, I would add, um, I think the council committee should be thinking, what is the problem you want to to address? What is What is the problem you're trying to solve? And you're asking, is this the right tool to solve the problem? I mean, just to accept something, to accept it doesn't make it, it's a it's a ton of time to, to investigate all of the roads, you know, hundred miles of roads, and, and analyze them. And uh, many of these things we may not be able to do internally. We might have to have a consultant come in. So it's we're going to be spending time and or money on this. But I think the question, I think for all of our time, it's important to say what is the problem we're trying to solve, and is this the right tool for the solution? So, and so just because it's on our carryover list doesn't mean you have to do anything with it. You can say, we don't see the need to do anything on it. So that's a decision for you as, an, as a committee to think about. And I think it's important for, to be judicious in how you allocate your own personal time as well as staff time. The one thing that we had in the first council before TSO was created and this topic of traffic and traffic safety was assigned to CRC was that uh, Jason Skeels and our current acting police chief, who was then a captain uh, in the police department, uh, Gabe Ting, came before the committee and made uh, a presentation about speed limits, how speed limits are determined, and uh, but uh, it was a very informative presentation. Uh, this was not at a time when we necessarily had recordings of all meetings. There was a meeting, was a meeting in person uh, at that point. Uh, whether that kind of a presentation should happen again is something that we ought to be considering as to whether someone from DPW and the police department could make a presentation to this committee. Jennifer? Yeah, I just wanted um, to confirm that this is a different conversation than Henry Street, that we're looking at, okay, Henry Street. Okay, thanks. It's a different, uh, there are two, as noted, there are two different sections and uh, the Henry Street is dealing with the section 18B and what we've already accepted but they're very specific requirements for the uh, what where you can use that 
provision and what the process is. And the process for that includes uh, not just the identification of the reason for a special uh, speed limit, in this case, a daycare center or a school is one of the things. And uh, then the requirements of an engineering study, which is what uh, Gilford was reporting on earlier. George, Scott, right. <laughs> Um, Paul raises a good point, and I hear him. Um, uh, the question of what's the problem we're trying to address, and I, I will certainly give it a lot more thought. But my immediate response is that um, is something I do hear from constituents. Uh, one of the common refrains is speeding um, and pedestrian safety uh, on a number of different streets. Um, I'm not saying this is the solution to that problem. Uh, I don't know what the solution is. Maybe there is no solution, but it is something I certainly hear a fair amount about. Um, and uh, maybe the, the next step, if the committee wants it, is what Andy suggests, this hearing from uh, the police department and just to having maybe have them do a similar presentation. I'm afraid asking them to do it twice, but um, to get us to focus our minds on what the problem is and whether we think this is the right way to proceed. Um, but yeah. Uh, Bob? I was just thinking the police department probably also has data on where they've issued citations for speeding and we could ask them to provide that information. I think that would be very helpful. Uh -huh. Again, I would say, what is the problem? You, you know, is there a road that you want us to look into? I mean, I mean, uh, just general information is really good. It's useful, and I, I appreciate that. But I think that if if you're asking our staff to say we have to say is speeding an issue in the town of Amherst, we can have a general discussion. I don't think that'll be very satisfying um, because the answer is always yes. Um, pedestrian safety is always yes. Um, it, but it's it's helping us understand where are you hearing the concerns because you hear it a lot more frequently than we do and that's what's helpful to us and if you say this road this crossing this this area is a is a major issue um i hear it repeatedly from my constituents then we can look into that and come up with a plan of action for you to convey back to your constituents saying here are things that we can do here are things we can't do and here's the likely impact of what we do because um, it, it it does come up and usually it comes up not through a committee it comes up through individual counselors saying you know I'm, I'm hearing from my neighbors people are speeding and it's it's something that we would address through police enforcement or something like that but if it's a more uh, continuing thing that in you you want a more permanent type solution that takes it to a different level of the conversation. But again, I think the specificity of what the comp of the issue is is really important um, in terms of making our meeting. You, are, you, know, you have limited number of hours of meetings, and making those productive. Once we open up the discussion, I think we will hear from lots of people with their opinions. I. I think that uh, where I've generally been hearing most frequently is where there has already been a pedestrian death that has occurred and or people who have very specific concerns. And the pedestrian deaths that I can uh, recall or the one we've already mentioned on North Pleasant Street, there was one on Northeast Street, uh, just uh, south of Strong, if I recall. Correctly, it was a number of years ago, and I know that one of the uh, property owners on that section of roadway, which is 45 miles an hour from Strong Street until almost uh, getting to uh, Main Street, is uh, uh, something that this particular individual has uh, felt is too high and needs to be a lower number and has discussed that with me multiple times. Um, the ones, there are several pedestrian deaths that occurred on streets and the university campus. And there's a question of who has jurisdiction there. Because of those, those roadways are actually university roadways. 
So those, uh, that's my comment about, yes, I do hear specific things and what they generally tend to be. Um, so uh, let's, is there an interest in getting at least a general presentation of, so that we have a better understanding of how speed limits are determined and what and what 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 we can do if presented and then address uh, specific situations as they arise because I know that this uh, one citizen on Northeast Street will come back again as soon as there's an opportunity to do so. Councilor Ryan. So are you, you asking Sandy if we'd like to have some kind of presentation at some point just as an overview um, for information purposes? Is that your question to us? Um, yes. And um, I also hear the thought, which is a good one for me to begin to make a list of streets that, that I've heard from. I can think of a couple. Um, Roy Lane is one. I've heard a lot about certain stretches of it. Um, Shea Street, we've already had mentioned. Uh, Amity Street. Um, so, uh, again, Paul's right. We have to be judicious about the use of our time or use of staff time. Um, but this is something that's been around for a while, and we should either fish or cut bait. If we're really not interested in this, we should just say so and just uh, say it's done. Um, or we should at least at some point in the next month or so see if we can get better information and also um, amongst our constituents and in our own notes um, make a list of streets that uh, we have heard about that we'd like some input from at least the police department uh, about uh, what could be done, if anything, and whether this kind of broad brush approach or use of this particular statute is appropriate. Paul? Well, yeah, I think what will what would be, I think an educational session would be useful. I think what's important to understand is how speed limits get set. You don't get to just pick a number. Um, there is a, you know, you have to, there's a study that gets done. Um, you usually have to align it with the State Department of Transportation. The logic of that is that people from wherever they're driving, they have, they have to have certain expectations on what, what the speed is going to be in a certain area. Um, and then there's some, and this is what the study is being done for Henry Street, is you know, like how many accidents have there been? What are, is there evidence other than just people complaining that there is an issue with speed. So there's, and, and I think it's important to understand that because the engineers can't just willy-nilly do things. They they have a they have a, man, a uniform manual of traffic control devices and what you're allowed to put where because there needs to be that predictability throughout the state or nationwide. Um, and we have experts in that on our DPW staff. So they can address that and it'll help you understand, you know, someone says, I'd like it to be 10 miles an hour in front of my house. It's like, that's just not an option, right? Because whatever reason, but it's better for better than me trying to explain it to you, having the experts explain it to you. And, and what is, what are the, what's the process for adjusting those speed limits and identifying um, hot button issues? And then what are the, you know, other places, you know, enforcement is another tool that we have and, and the chief uh, acting interim chief can update you on how those, how that usually pans out. Cause we've done that a, you know, this is not, none of these issues are new. The town's been struggling with them and it's in every town, you know, the same issues pop up. Uh, you see it happening in our neighboring towns all the time about speeding on their on their roads. So so I think I can work with the chair about scheduling something with the, um, someone from police and some from, from DPW to share that information. I think that that's, I think you'll find that really interesting actually. Okay, so we will go forward with that. So those are the issues that were um, in the carryover memo. I think that, oh, there was uh, the street street light policy and uh, there was a statement at the in the street light policy section that uh, said uh, TSO will continue their review following receipt of the town manager's recommended policy. That uh, because what we were finding was is that this was a policy that uh, was because of the it, it ended up it needed to be implemented by staff and there needed to be funds and there were technical questions as to what was a feasible approach and uh, 
So it was, uh, uh, I think that uh, the counselor sponsors, um, which are uh, uh, counselor uh, Haneke and uh, counselor Dublin Gauthier, um, are interested in moving this forward, but uh, we're um, waiting to see what the staff recommendation would be. And uh, I don't know if you, Paul or Guilford, yeah. have anything to say. So again, this is one of the things that got referred to the DPW. So we've just talked about about four things that are on the DPW's plate. So this is where um, we're trying, working with staff to sort of manage the time and expectations for the council. So you know when er everything can't be done this month. Um, and so we just want to set expectations on when you can expect to see things. This is in, in our court, the street lighting thing. It's also one of those topics as Guilford has started to dig into it more. And um, Councillor Haneke sent a, a additional links from information she gathered at the MMA annual meeting um, that you, know, you start to peel the onion and it becomes, it's very complex. And there's, I think there's not, depending on you know it's just trying to develop information for the council because i'm not sure where the council exactly is on this on this topic but i'll, I'll get a time we can t talk this through and we look at all the other things on the agenda for dpw and building a new water treatment plant and things like that they're also important on when they'll be able to get to these things jennifer yeah, so I guess I'm so so the street lighting is still in TSO. It hasn't moved. Okay. It it got referred. I think I can address it. Yeah, so yeah. last year TSO referred it. Or they didn't refer it. They recommended the council as the town manager for staff input. Um, and so it's it's with Paul for staff input, and it will come back to TSO once the council receives that draft from Paul. So it's still with TSO, but it, it's not ready for TSO to be taken up yet. Guilford? So we do have the we do have the draft that you guys have looked at last, and we've been talking to our vendor about how to meet the requirements or and meet some of the requirements that are in it and can we meet some of the requirements with our existing lights and how to upgrade the lights and so forth and we're working on that and that'll probably take a couple months to get through all that i have been talking to um counselor haneke about it as well and she's been keeping me up to date on the things that she's looking at and being um things that she's looking at to try to help meet the requirements of it as well. So it is being moved forward. It's, it is a bigger, it is pretty interesting con, con conversation and um, we are looking at it just so you know. So you're working, uh, you don't have a date and we're not asking for a date when you'll be back, but you are working on it. Uh, Jennifer? I don't know if this is the time to ask the question, but I still had a question about the town gown working partnership and the participatory budgeting. Can I ask that now, or is, should I wait till the end I, of the meeting? I think, uh, is there any, we need to draw this to a close and I, it's given to identify new issues, but go ahead. No, I just, because this was the first time I had actually you know, again, because I haven't been on the committee seeing that it was referred. So I just want to clarify that I'm understanding it correctly. Is this, was this a suggestion that there, we form a committee of town and gown to discuss how the two entities could work together on? Okay. So yeah, I just appreciate that, some clarification. Sure. So I think it's important to understand what participatory budgeting is. What that means is that there's a sum of money set aside out of the town's budget to do certain things or some other source of funding. And I think that that was the concept of Cambridge, for instance, has a very robust participatory budgeting. The town has never had money to set aside um, to participate, to do this, this model of budgeting where the, where members of the public come in and choose how to budget things. Um, and that's where I think this sort of, you know, it was included into the town charter because it's an interesting idea, but in terms of finances, the town's never been in a position where where it said 
we now want, want to put a million dollars aside instead of putting take putting into our budget. We're going to let have this done through a different process. What we've done instead is did the uh, capital request is residents can submit capital requests through our online, you know. You know, if we have resident capital request options that people can do the same type of thing. Um, so, follow up question. Yes. Sure. Yeah. So this is has nothing to do with a pilot. No. No. Where the other partners might put up the money. I don't know. I you know I honestly don't know what the participatory budgeting committee what what that concept came from. Um, so I don't really know what that is or is about. Thank you. I think the thing that might be useful is uh, being able to look at the participatory budgeting commissions to report to the council from the first term, because that's where this arose. So uh, get that back into the packet as uh, soon as we can find it, I think that's the best way to address it going forward. Are there, um, as I said earlier, we have um, going through the, uh, we've talked about the speed limit update. Um, we need to do public comment, which I will do in a moment. Um, and uh, upcoming agenda items. I think that we should uh, have an opportunity for all of you to see what you would like to see on future agendas that is not there. So, uh, but first, let me see if there's anybody who is a member of the public who would like to um, have to, uh, a few minutes to make a presentation of uh, an issue that's relevant to the committee. Uh, that is a standard part of our meetings for all committees and uh, for the council. So I invite members uh, who are in the audience to raise their hand if they would like to offer public comment today. I see no hands having been raised. So I think at this point, uh, we can go on to that um, last question that I raised. Are there other issues that people would like to see on future agendas that have not been discussed? George, uh, Councilor Ryan. Um, I've gotten a number of uh inquiries about our snow and ice bylaw and the procedures and what the expectations are. And uh, so I would like us to see if we can get some clarity uh, about what people are required to do. Um, I walk a fair amount in my neighborhood and uh, it's it gets pretty treacherous. Uh, I've gotten some uh, special shoes now so I can make my way up Amity Street and down. Um, and so I'm sure I'm not the only uh, person who has this problem. And so I don't know what our role is in this, uh, but uh, people have been asking me. And so I would like us to perhaps uh, give some thought to that or at least find out what we can tell people. Um, I've already mentioned the TSO website and I would like it to be more robust, uh, but that's something perhaps we can discuss at a future point. Um, and I'd also like us to see if we could uh, have a discussion, perhaps invite members of the Council of Aging, but I'd like us as a committee, since we deal with town services, to learn a bit more about the age and dementia study and what is being done and how that's being implemented, um, more information than anything else, and an opportunity for uh, the senior community to address us as a committee about the services that they receive and what they are getting and what they would like to get. So I guess three things, the TSO website and how it could be more robust. Um, I'd like to see if we could talk a little bit more about this, uh, learn more about the snow and ice bylaw and get clarity with that. Um, and thirdly, I would like us to look at the age and dementia study and invite members of the senior community, perhaps uh, Council of Aging, um, to have a, just a conversation. There are three things that I would like us to consider at some point. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, yes, well, first, just to respond to George, um, 
GOL took up snow and ice removal and obstacles to the public way. We strengthened and revised that bylaw. And it's now actually within the inspections department. So I don't know if we'd want to maybe ask Rob just to come in and say a few words about that, um, because it is a little different. And we really tried to um, address that and be able to strengthen enforcement and be very clear on what the property owners adjacent to the sidewalks, uh, what their responsibility is. Um, I agree with George, I would be, um, I would really like to address senior services. So um, a presentation on that would be, um, I think would be terrific. And also, I guess in terms of the waste hauler bylaw, if the report was going to be done at the end of February, we don't have another meeting until March 14th. So if we could look to the March 14th TSO meeting to have um, the report from the from Guilford, that would be terrific. Uh, we have a February 15 meeting scheduled on the list. There's a February. Yeah, I don't know if he would be done then. He said the end of February, so maybe okay. we can look to the March meeting. Yeah, that's correct. First meeting in March. Okay. Um, so, um, you bring the waist taller back then. Is there any uh, anybody who's uh, objecting to the idea of spending some time getting a brief report on uh, snow and ice if it's available? Paul, do you have any comments on that? I guess I don't know what the what the question is. I mean, we have a new bylaw. There's a process for people to file complaints. I think there's the sense that, that people don't really know what the responsibility of Homer, for instance, uh, on Amity Street, um, uh, there are whole sections that are icy. Um, people don't clear it. Um, the town comes and plows it, um, which is nice. That's appreciated, but it's not down to the surface. Then it freezes. Uh, the, uh, the snow becomes compacted. It becomes icy. Um, and no one puts sand out. No one, no one of the property owners on Amity Street, except the, uh, I find, at least some closer to downtown, so I think maybe there's also a role for us as counselors simply to be more proactive through the district meetings, through our newsletters, uh, trying to get people to be more conscientious, more aware. Um, but it's treacherous, uh, at least in my neck of the woods. And uh, nobody seems to pay attention to or care about our bylaws. So we have this new bylaw. It's been strengthened, but it's meaningless. Uh, we can't enforce it. People don't know about it. And... Uh, so yeah, that's that's the problem. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, so I think people have to file complaints so it can be enforced. Uh, they would do that through C-Click Fix or just call DPW? Um, no, it's not DPW. It's under inspection services now. Right. So we could be help people understand the process. Sure, that would be useful. Um, can we ourselves as counselors do that? Sure. Can I, we can we can forward. And so if somebody complains and I can forward that complaint or I can I can echo that. Um, okay, so re really through inspections is the way that you have to complain. I think what we'd like to hear, at least I would like to hear from Rob or someone, is whether this is there's any realistic op chance, given staffing uh, demands, et cetera, for them to actually enforce this. Uh, it, it, yeah, that may be the problem. It's mm -hmm. you can complain all you want, but there's nobody that's going to enforce it. Um, and so I need to hear from somebody about whether there's any possibility of enforcement um, because I don't hear of any enforcement. I've never heard of anyone ever having- well, I can check to see if there, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Paul, I'm sorry. I, I, um, I can check to see if there have been any complaints. Okay. I haven't heard of any complaints being filed. Mm -hmm. okay. So there can't be enforcement without complaints. complaints. Okay, all right. And if you have any guidance uh, or uh... Rob Mora has any comment, uh, advice about how to file a complaint that's most efficient and useful. Uh, that would be good because people need to know where to call, but we don't want to overload pe the inappropriate people or to do it in an inefficient manner. Jennifer? Yeah, I mean, some of it may, we could start with just really, I mean, again, informing the counselors because we have new counselors. So I had a resident right last week and because I was on GOL, I was sort of up to date on it. And I referred this, the resident to Rob and Rob immediately responded 
it was an issue um, on East Pleasant Street. So I think some of it is bringing all the councillors up to speed and we can include it in our correspondence. And I don't know if there's any, does the town ever send out correspondence to residents? I guess it's just bills, but so it might just help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> in a bill. But um, for, for the councillors to start with bringing all the councillors up to speed, Yes, I, Rob was immediately responsive when he, inspection services, when he got, received the complaint from the resident. Right. So, so our tool of enforcement is to charge, is to issue $50 to, uh, tickets to whoever is responsible for the sidewalk. And I think in this case, he called, it was a commercial establishment and made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that... Uh... It's very helpful. So what I would like to do is um, meet with the vice chair and the town manager at an appropriate time and uh, try and uh, start developing an agenda plan for the committee of for each meeting, what it is that we seek to do and try and start uh, doing the actual committee uh, planning for agendas, and uh, I think that would be the, the the next step we would take. Is there anything else that people would like to raise today? Because if not, I think we probably. I think is there anything else that you think that we need to do before, or Paul, before we adjourn? No, I think you're good. So I, at that point, looking to raise hands to see if there's any last minute uh, thoughts people have. Otherwise, I think that we are adjourned. I will uh, work with uh, Athena and Paul to set up a meeting time that works that can involve uh, the council, Ryan and myself, and we will take the information discussion today and try and uh, do a first step at uh, a plan for the committee for how we'll move on these issues and what the schedule is. So that said, I think we're ready to adjourn and the committee uh, is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.